Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. I am playing in the M41 Walker Bulldog. This is the Tier 7 American Light Tank, and it's probably my favorite tank to play in the game currently. I'm playing on Lakeville, and this is going to be an overview of how, even when you're literally the bottom tier tank in as bad matchmaking as you could possibly have, how can you still have a positive influence in the game? Well, obviously, the M41 Walker Bulldog is a pure scout. There's a pure scout with a mighty bite. It does get a 76mm that has 175mm of penetration with 150 alpha damage. But that doesn't mean on Lakeville, if you spawned on the southern side, that you can't be aggressive. We managed to get a, a spot on the T62 as he drove into position, and then some good support by our medium tanks from the back take him out. Now I'm lighting up this Object 263, but unfortunately, none of the three artillery on my team were able to connect. And the gentleman down here would have been more than 500 meters away from him, and so they wouldn't have been able to render that target. None of the medium tanks decided to come up to here. If they had, we would have probably been able to obliterate that 263. And taking out one of their tier 10 tanks at the beginning of the game would have put us at a massive advantage. But it wasn't all good news for us. We lost an RU-251. Panzer, as well as a Tiger II, probably to the eyes of that T Type 62. So this front bush, if you can rush into it, sometimes is a bush too far. It can get you into a lot of trouble, but as we can see, the reward is utterly fantastic. We were able to spot the E75 even taking the safe route round at the back. We got eyes on quite a few of the valuable targets of the enemy team. But now we see that the enemy are rushing into our base, and so I go back to defend this Object 704. Just before we put in the death shot into that T-71, a good hit from our T-30 removes him from the game. Now we have to deal with a French Tier 7 light tank. He's in just as bad of a matchup as me. Our first shot takes his track off, he uses his repair kit, and he pulls back. I proceed to go and hunt him, but then I see a T-34 there which we narrowly avoid. I'm still trying to track him, but a great hit by our artillery takes him out of the game. A quick look to my left, and I realize the gentleman who I was trying so hard to defend is AFK. Well, maybe he'll come back in a minute. Now the enemy are assaulting through, and there's a T-54 lightweight. This is the brand new Tier 8 Soviet light tank. We track him, and another excellent shot from our T-30 removes one of their aggressive players. That was a fantastic result to take out that T-54 lightweight, a very experienced player in a rather dangerous tank even in this matchup. So now I decide we should get some eyes back across the middle. Before that, we've probably got a Borsig to shoot. Now I thought I would get spotted there. I was probably only about... 400, maybe 375 meters away from that Borsig, and it was quite likely that I would get spotted. But I want to get my eyes further forwards, and oh gosh, there's a tortoise. The tortoise is not a Muppet. He decides quickly, sees us, and aims directly at us. And that is not a tier 9 tank that you want to have aiming at you. That tortoise is able to rip us apart probably in maybe 6 seconds he could do the whole of our hit point pulls worth of damage. We do see that there's a Borsig here, however, so we pull back, and we put a few shots into him. That one might have broken his gun, but he decides he doesn't want to get shot in the arse, and so pushes forwards into the town. Now, if he had taken a shot at us, he would have had to have had the 150mm, which he didn't have, to be able to take us out in one shot. And we would have been able to risk it to pretty much pick apart the whole of his tank with the excellent rate of fire that we have on the Bulldog. So we get another spot on the Tortoise, and I'm just praying that shots start to come in on him. And they do. We see one connect, probably by the T-30 again, or possibly by the artillery. And right now this game is very close. There's a bit of a stalemate in the town. And I guess the artillery on both sides are, di are dictating how the fight will go down. So we spot a tortoise again. 
but we can't turn around to worry about him. We have to go and deal with this T-34. And again, some great defensive work by the looks of it from our T-30. Put him on low hit points and our artillery finish him off. So now, you've seen that throughout this game, I've always been defending. I've tried to put myself in positions where we either we halt an enemy advance, preventing them from getting spots on our artillery, or getting eyes far forward so I can keep my team in the fight with their guns singing. And so what I feel now is that we've pretty much spotted the entire sea of the enemy team. And if I can light up this tortoise and use my excellent camera rating, we might be able to deal with him. Now I reload some heat rounds here and try and connect with the port on top of his tank. And there we go. Our spots allow that T-30 again to pick apart the Tier 9 tank destroyer who was on Overwatch. And so now, seeing that three of the enemy are spotted there, we know that only artillery could be defending their base. So we make another break for it. We push forward upslope even at 60 kilometers an hour using the excellent engine power of this vehicle and start to engage this tier 10 artillery. But oh my word, the side armor on this GWE 100 is very thick and he takes three shots to the side of his vehicle, none of them doing any damage. An SU-14-2 shows himself and we've got to take some evasive maneuvers here. We hide behind a building. We're locked down now. But we've got to deal with this SU-14-2. We track him. He doesn't have a repair kit or he decides not to use it and we take him out. Next, can we handle this GWE-100? We go around the corner, pull back, bait the shot. Miss one, but now we have him. And there's where we needed to be shooting. His superstructure, not the awesome hull armor of the vehicle. And he can't bounce anymore. Now it's just a nice relaxing case of let's deal with the GW Tiger. He's on fire. Let him burn a little bit and take him out the game. So this replay was just to highlight some of the tactics that you can employ on Lakeville, especially in your light or medium tanks. And I also wanted to show one important thing and probably one of my biggest hates in World of Tanks. And that is suicide scouts. Light tanks are so important to your team. And while there's no doubt that they're probably the hardest vehicle to play in World of Tanks, with good practice, you can have just as much, if not more, impact than any of the other classes, even when you're bottom tier. And I also wanted to show why, in my opinion, the Walker Bulldog is probably the most fun you can have in World of Tanks, at least in this current patch. And hell, maybe things will change, maybe they'll nerf the tank, maybe they'll introduce some more vehicles that are even more ridiculous than this Tier 7 American light tank. So now I'm just going to run down a few of the key things that we needed to do as a light tank in this battle. One, try and make the initial spot, but do so as safely as you can. You either want to use the front bush or the bush that's even further out to be able to get spots on your opponents. From here, you light up medium tanks that try and sneak their way into here. And using the speed on the bulldog, we were able to reach the bush and not even get spotted. After that, we saw that the enemy light tanks were trying to breach into our base and take out our artillery. Luckily for us, however, two of our artillery had situated themselves down here, probably thinking that the enemy light tanks would try and breach their way through. So it was very important that we left even this front position to be able to go back and handle the T-71 and the AMX 1375. Then after we defended the base from another push from the T-54 lightweight and that IS-3 that got dealt with very quickly, we needed to go back to our original position and start to light up the rest of your map. If you manage to get yourself stuck into a situation with a tank destroyer down this narrow pass, you are going to die very quickly unless you can get covering fire. Luckily, we were able to outmaneuver the tortoise, force him to pull back by continuously lighting him up and getting him shot by the T-30 and the artillery. And once he had pulled back, we could make a breach back to the base and get the engagement at long range. In your light tanks, your advantage is your camo rating. 
There is no difference in your camera rating on your light tanks when you're moving or when you're stationary. It's exactly the same. That is the speciality of the light tank roll. Therefore, we could see the tortoise before he could see us, and it was just a case of lighting him up, pulling back behind the bush, firing a few rounds at him. Maybe we would penetrate him and wait for the artillery to do their thing. Then we can do what we would call the hero run. And this is probably the worst thing that a player could do in their light tanks. Some people just try and do the hero run at the beginning of the game, when there are too many enemies alive and they will come back and deal with you or well, there's just too many guns firing at you and eventually one's going to catch you out. We did our hero run towards the mid and late game where there were only three tanks left on the enemy team and three artillery. We knew that we only had to evade the enemy artillery shells, and even if we did get hit by them, at least we would lit up the enemy artillery and allow ours to counter battery. This is a fairly standard tactic on Lakeville, and if I had spawned north, I would have done exactly the same thing. I would have made my way through here, gone to this position, spotted the enemies as they went along here and hopefully a few of our artillery would have hit their targets. Then I would have pulled back likely to this corner to deal with the enemies as they flanked through. And if they had had an overwhelming force here, I would have fallen back into these bushes to light them up on the corner, allowing our artillery who, who have hopefully fled down to the eastern area to drop in some shells on them. And I still have an opportunity to pull back. And then as a last ditch resort, fight in the town with our medium tanks. Anyway, let's just take a very quick look at the post game stats. So this game happened a few days ago during a 5 times experience event and we were able to get nearly 13,000 experience. We got the Scout Medal for spotting most of the enemy team, the Pascusis Medal for killing 3 of the enemy artillery, and the Confederate. We were a true support tank in this round. We finished second on damage, well played to you Charlie, I only watching this video back now realised how much of a large impact you had in this game. What a round for you, sir. You definitely carried us. 4,500 damage and four kills. But he definitely needed a light tank to help him do that. We got 3,000 spotting damage and 633 upon detracking, as well as 2,800 damage done in the Walker Bulldog. But we still made 46,000 credits profit, even though we did fire a couple of those dirty heat rounds at him. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And if this replay has sparked your interest in my favorite tank in the game at the moment, the M41 Walker Bulldog, then click up here and you can be taken through to a full tank review on this vehicle, which also includes gameplay using the autoloader on this tank. This vehicle is capable of using that 76 millimeter autoloader with 10 rounds in the magazine and let me know in the comments down below what you think about the m41 walker bulldog do you think it's overpowered and it needs a nerf or do you think it's refreshing that there is a tier 7 light tank with some serious bite behind its bark anyway guys as always thank you so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon